Hi. Okay. Yeah. Hi, good morning and good afternoon. Um, thanks for the opportunity of uh, letting us uh, showing our work. Um, today we will present uh, Emergency Watch for All. Uh, we want to talk about technical designs for inclusive menstrual hygiene management and friendly latrines uh, and bathing areas. With me today, it's Jamili Dohei, um, and we will uh, present you the work that uh, Federation um, has done with British Red Cross, Lebanese Red Cross, Arab, and with the support of HIV Erla. Yeah. As many of you already know, we have always seen in emergency that standard emergency latrines and bathing areas designs are often not appropriate for people women's rate and many times including those with disabilities. To be able to manage menstruation, we know that we need properly um, places that are private, safe, and that we can do that in a dignified way. Besides of that, we see many times that you know we don't have enough, uh, you know, um, a place and space for mobility issues and other type of problems. For example, we see we don't have internal locks. The lighting is many times poor. We have poor sitting in many of the of the latrines and bathing areas that we see in the emergency situation. And many times as well, we overlook the need for disposal or appropriate drying spaces for menstrual hygiene. So this is why we thought that we will need to work and find a solution for this problem. And for that, we how we will address this problem, we wanted to develop a manual where <clears throat> we could um, find solution for menstrual hygiene management and accessible friendly designs for the acute phase of an emergency. When we are talking about the acute phase, we were talking about normally five months after an emergency is happening. We, as we say before, we had done a partnership between Lebanese Red Cross, British Red Cross and Arup, and with the support of Erla, we had a two year project to design and pilot a menstrual hygiene friendly and accessible emergency wash facilities. For us, it was very important the steps. We wanted to do a literature review and design brief. Then we have done as well a big technical expert group where we review uh, many issues beside of the designs. And then the third part of it was to pilot uh, the race facility uh, in Lebanon. Um, for that uh, as well, I wanted as well to emphasize that we wanted to use really user center design. We wanted to understand the context and key constraints uh, we wanted as well, you know, to, to really understand the needs uh, from the target population. And we wanted as well to develop a design for emergency phase that could be flexible for different types of emergency situations. This was very challenging as we know that every context is very different one from another. The third a part of the project as well was to provide enough information to allow that um, WASH uh, practitioners were able to uh, allow the design to be adapted and easily built for not only Red Cross um, WASH practitioners, but as well for other uh, organizations that will be need this type of designs. So I pass now to my colleague Jamili. Oba Jamili. Thank you, Alexandra. So uh, as part of understanding the user needs and uh, the context, 
just to quickly mention that uh, this first uh, pilot uh, happened in uh, Baalbek, Hermel Governorate area of uh, the northern portion of the Bekaa Valley in, in Lebanon. And uh, also to mention that uh, it had a specific uh, characteristics. So, for example, it is a very agricultural region with uh, dry, uh, arid lands, and uh, it had like roughly uh, rainfall per year. So it is a very uh, arid uh, uh, area. And uh, the reason of uh, choosing this uh, particular uh, area in Lebanon was due to the uh, extensive assessment of the Lebanese Red Cross and the strong relationship with uh, the Syrian uh, refugees uh, in Lebanon and uh, prioritization of, of the needs uh, enabled us to uh, identify this specific uh, region as uh, to be the targeted area uh, of, of our project. So uh, you will see that uh, this uh, target site uh, of uh, Makiyi in Ka'a Jouar area um, had a, a low water table, flat, rocky terrain with dry, arid lands. And the reason uh, was to uh, target only 16 households, uh, in particular of 74 individuals, was uh, only because we were now piloting the sanitation structure of, of the facility. And uh, knowing that uh, this is not a big uh, target group, but this will allow us to uh, start understanding more and more, uh, knowing that this is a first pilot and it needs the full understanding and acceptance of the community uh, as well. Next uh, slide, please. So uh, to uh, further move into the methodology of uh, the project, um, what we started with was the, the workshop to really uh, apply uh, the menstrual hygiene management uh, guidelines and tools developed by the Federation. And uh, this workshop really uh, went over in specific uh, of the uh, menstrual hygiene management uh, tools and to try to adapt them to the context of uh, the project. So the focus group discussion uh, guidance and uh, template was the one that was used in collecting uh, information uh, for the project. Next slide, please. So you will see here uh, that uh, we used the, the focus group uh, design user centered uh, approach and knowing that during this period we had COVID-19 and uh, having a larger group was was very, I mean, restrictive. So we had to uh, conduct the focus group discussion with eight uh, women from the from the target uh, group, uh, also having two volunteers from the Lebanese Red Cross and uh, members from the Federation to also uh, assist in utilizing the uh, focus group discussion uh, template and uh, collecting as much as information as possible in terms of the uh, challenges faced, uh, the user preferences and uh, the cultural norms uh, as, as preferred by the community for our design. Uh, so moving into the developing the design for the for the emergency phase, um, as to to mention again that uh, the purpose of of this design is to be really um, used and a flexible design in emergency context. So we really wanted to have a modular design that is uh, easy and quick to build, uh, to be at the same time balancing between what we must have in an emergency setting and what is also appropriate to have uh, as per the uh, community's preferences. So um, we uh, resorted to uh, three designs. We have the raised latrine design, the trench latrine design, and of course the, the bathing uh, area, uh, which are really detailed in the manual uh, that was also uh, developed. Next uh, slide, please. Okay, so uh, here we, uh, one example is the raised uh, latrine and you see that it is highly um, uh, acceptable and uh, really, um, yeah, this, this picture as well, to accommodate uh, disability, uh, like to accommodate people with disabilities uh, because it provides a, an appropriate uh, ramp elevation, the best uh, space that would be uh, appropriate to uh, allow the person to really uh, use the toilet efficiently and also uh, as, a, as a bathing uh, area. 
Yeah, next uh, next slide is the also like the part of the bathing and the laundry uh, facilities. OK, so uh, we come here to the pictures of the pilot. So these are the real time uh, picture uh, of the pilot that took place in Lebanon. And uh, just to mention here that um, it was first assembled in the in the warehouse uh, of Lebanese Red Cross and then um, uh, com completed like fully uh, loaded uh, in the area in around uh, two days uh, time. And uh, this is like another example just to show that uh, this could be uh, put as as like pieces together to really have a modular design to be used in in uh, emergency settings and this could be also replicable uh, as well uh, even if we have different uh, emergency uh, context um Thanks. next slide yeah yeah yeah, thanks, thanks so much, Emily. I, I wanted only to wrap up, as we say before, uh, the third part was to provide enough information in the manual and all what you saw from the previous pictures that Jamil showed you, we in the manual uh, have really this information. We have three sections, section A, B and C. In A, you will have really the designs as you saw it. Section B is more the fundamentals of wash facility, how to do the site selection and design. We wanted to really, you know, to really show and 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 emphasize that it's very important to to check and to have a correct uh, <laughs> site selection, space requirements, and everything. And then um we have the bill of queue beside of the package of drawings. It's super important for us. And as well, we have uh, as well uh, structure performance specifications and step by step uh, manual for for the construction. We found as well a difficulty on the on the including as well the cray water and the sludging issues because as you saw in the race letterings we we needed to make sure that all the connections and everything it's it's really it's, it's really there so if you want any of this information if you want to check please check our watson mission assistant or sanitation all the manuals are there. We have uh, the drawings, the bill of queue, and we have other type of uh, guidance for menstrual hygiene that perhaps, and, and compilation of case studies that perhaps uh, could be useful for you. It's all open source, um, so please use as, as you need. Uh, for more information, I put we put here our contacts. And thanks so much, as I say before, for the opportunity of being in this important event. Uh, and as well, um, we want to thank HIF and the Innovation Fund of HIF to, to allow us to, to, to have been doing this, this very important project. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay.